You can perform many Final Cut Pro edit operations with the mouse or trackball, but they're slow. The keys to speed are the keys. This will give you another nice taste of the power you get from FCP key commands, this time on the job. As in the first tour, you'll find everything I cover here and lots more on the new FCP7 key guide from Vocal Press. First in a typical workflow, media capture. And for tape sources, that means Command 8, login capture window. If you're using tapeless media, you'll invoke Command Shift 8, login transfer, with similar shortcuts where they apply. Virtually everything in this window is keyboard controllable. I press the space bar to get the tape playing. I tap the tab key to bring me into the first text field. It's my seventh reel, so I'll call this reel 007. Tab again to type the description. And for this show, I'm capturing an hour long reel in chunks rather than shots, so I'll add the first chunk number separated by an underscore. Underscore 01. I could check scene and take fields too, but this is a documentary. I've also unchecked the log dialog prompt. I won't need it. I tab through the remaining fields in the info pane until I come to the shuttle zone between panes. Now this gets subtle. If you tabbed past it, you'll find yourself in the preview pane and you've highlighted your upper left timecode field. No problem, just continue tabbing forward until you reach the timecode field at bottom right. Your next tab takes you back not into the info pane, but first into the shuttle zone. Here in the zone, your JKL keys will now work to transport your source tape. I press L to shuttle forward at sound speed. When I find a good in point, I lift a finger and press I for in, on the fly. Then I drop my fingers back down to JKL. I'm not even looking at the keyboard. I play the source forward with the L key. I tap it again. I get higher speed shuttle. Ah, I went too far, past my out point. I press K to stop. I tap J to reverse. I tap it again for higher speed backward. Remember, this is tape, so be gentle, don't overuse shuttle. Now I went too far back. So what? I press K, this time with L, to slow shuttle forward to my desired out point. There. Now I press F2, which both sets the out point and logs the clip, and there it is in my bin. Notice how FCP auto-increments the shot number each time I press F2, one of FCP's most powerful key commands. Now I go for a new endpoint, and the logging cycle repeats. Okay, I'm done logging this source. My offline clips are ready for batch capture. Not once have I touched the mouse during log and capture. Here's a bin I already captured. I have several performance clips and a marked interview clip in separate bins. I can build a sequence like a bricklayer if I like, inch by inch, but rough cuts often involve a more global approach. Save the left brain detail work for revision and fine cut. All my clips now have rough in-out marks. Here's an instant rough cut from the keys. Command A selects all clips in the bin. Command C copies everything selected. Command 3 switches focus to a timeline window new sequence. Now check this out. With Command V I paste, and there's my rough cut of marked selects. Some cool timeline commands. Clips out of order? You could go in with your mouse, lift one side of a pair to here, and the other side to there, and fill the hole. I'd rather go into real estate. Or simply swap. Engage snap, the end key. Then drag until it snaps to the head of the first clip. Then hold option and watch. You should see the curved swap cursor. Then let go. Instant swap. Okay, you want to mark a clip. Park on the first frame of a clip and simply press X. It marks the whole clip, both in and out at once. Remove both marks with option X. You want to start slicing clips on the fly. Can't do that with the mouse. Clicking the blade tool to make a cut stops playback. Start play and start slicing with control V, which is really the blade tool from the keyboard. When you stop, all your slices appear. You can control which tracks you slice by toggling track auto select buttons over here. I'm going to disable all video to slice only audio. Command 0 on the numeric keypad disables all video. Now control V slices only audio. Handy. I have some interview snips to lay over the performance here and there. Here's one I've already done, introducing blues guitarist Paul Rochelle. I started playing the drums when I was about 12 years old, and I was listening to a lot of jazz musicians because there wasn't any rock and roll drummers to listen to. Now I want to put in one for his partner on harmonica, Annie Rains. 
Both mouse and keyboard are well used here. I'll play to where I want Annie's voice to come in, right there after a couple tasty harp licks. First I have to retarget incoming video and audio because I prefer not to overwrite performance on V1. You do it all on the keys. Watch the patch panel. Target your video destination with F6, followed by the track number, in this case, 2. Now the source audio pair, F7, 3, F8, 4, and you're ready to cut. Switch to the viewer, Command 1. Notice in the clip I've placed red markers on favorite sections in the interview. I can navigate to these from the keyboard. Shift-M takes me to the next marker. Option-M takes me to the previous. Then I mark an in and an out around my choice. F10, overwrite edit, lays it in over the V1 track right at the playhead, which acted as an endpoint. Time to trim. We have a couple tasty bars from Annie's harp, then her voiceover, and I want to delay her on-camera appearance by a few seconds. An L cut. First, ducking the music under the incoming interview track. I use the auto-select controls on the numeric keypad to quickly isolate one audio pair from the other. Option 0 deselects all audio tracks. Now I can reselect just audio 1 and 2 with option 1 and 2 to enable them. And now, pressing Control left square bracket key, I can lower the gain 3 decibels per tap on the fly. There, after a few taps, I was hooked, I was addicted. I can now hear her voice clearly, yet the music continues under. I'll adjust this track after I L cut the video. To trim only Annie's incoming video track on V2, I'm going to temporarily override clip linking. Otherwise, I'll trim audio with video. I simply hold down Option and click the edit to select only video. Now, although they remain linked, I can trim video and audio won't trim with it. I simply use plus or minus keypad values to roll edit the shot into the future by three seconds. I type plus followed by three dot. The three is for seconds. The dot is a special time code shortcut I'm using in the frames position for two zeros or no frames. Then I press enter. See the cut jump ahead? It's now an L cut because it looks like an L. I like the numeric keypad for trims, but sometimes I need to get right in there on the beat. So with the edit point pre-selected, I just move my playhead to the beat I want and press E for extend. Instant roll edit. Now I want to ramp up the audio. I press Option, the Pen tool appears, two clicks and a drag, and I've keyframed and ramped up both tracks because they're linked as a stereo pair. Let's listen. I'm going to use the new FCP jump back command on Command, Control, Spacebar to back up a few seconds. Spacebar to play. So when I, when I listened to Muddy Waters for the first time, that sound wrapped itself around me. I was hooked, I was addicted. It's pretty good. Here's a huge new feature of FCP7, multiple transitions to video or audio. This used to be a puzzle to perform, now it's jet-like. You just mark it in and out at the end of the range and press Command T for your preset default video transition. or command Option T for your preset audio transition, and voila! There's so much more you can do on the keyboard, and you'll find it all on the Final Cut Pro 7 Key Guide from Focal Press. Pick up a copy and review these tip tours. Discover all the other powerful keys to speed.